I'm currently driving a Mazda BT50, engine management light is on and customer is complaining of both the light on and a noise from under the bonnet on acceleration. So the customer complaint is that there is a whooshing type noise under acceleration and of course we have the engine management light on. So let's try and replicate the problem. Okay, it's kind of hard to hear, I'm sure, on camera, but the passenger side, uh, mid, passenger side mid, of the engine bay does sound like it has a pressure type of noise. Let's go again. So the noise is very faint, it's not a very uh, pronounced noise. I will do it one more time before I head back to the workshop. So, second gear. Alright, so it's more noticeable at around 1800 to 22 and when you let off the accelerator you hear that type of noise so I'm going to bring it back to the workshop of course we're going to plug it in we're going to see what that fault code is and I'm going to assess around the passenger side of the engine bay to see if there's any issues around hoses etc there so let's get back to base and start to diagnose this fault <laughs> Now I'm back at the workshop, the first thing I do is plug in the scan tool and have a read to see what fault code is logged. In this case, it was P00BD, which is mass airflow A, circuit range slash performance flow too high. Now, when I see that fault code with the knowledge of the test drive behind me as well, so on that test drive, I was hearing that uh, noise while under load. That gives me a good indication that we have a leak. The mass airflow flow is reading too high which a split in a hose would give that reading coming through the mass airflow sensor so i have a quick look under the bonnet and i do find the uh, leak pretty much straight away the intercooler pipe was split and i was able to uh, see that and address it uh, pretty much within the first minute of inspecting it. So with that knowledge of the split intercooler pipe, I go ahead and see if it is available and then I give the prices to the customer to see if they want to go ahead with it. In this case, the part was on the shelf, which does indicate that it is a common problem when these parts are so readily available and the customer was happy to go ahead and get everything sorted on the day. Only a couple of things of note when you are removing and refitting a new intercooler hose is you want Want to make sure that the surfaces that the hose goes onto is nice and clean free from any oil or um, debris of any kind and when you are comparing the new to the old hose that they're exactly the same length diameter and that you're not going to have any issues in the fitment side of it with that the other and last thing is the um, clamps some intercooler hoses come with brand new clamps others you need to buy additionally i do recommend getting new clamps when you are replacing intercooler hoses after I have the job done, uh, clear the fault codes and I bring it for a road test.
So I'm just on the final road test with this now. As you could hear there, there was no difference in the accelerating. There was no whirring. There was no issues whatsoever. The engine management light is off and this vehicle is good to go. A nice straightforward one. The fault code gives, gives us a very clear indication, but that noise, more importantly, under acceleration on these diesel engines that have an intercooler pipe and a turbo. When you hear a whirring, a whooshing, a pressure type of noise, it can be described in many different ways, but if you hear that type of noise when you are putting on the load under acceleration and you have that boost going, you can get a good idea by just doing a vis visual inspection without a scan tool. So, this is good to go. The customer is going to be very happy. It's back to the way it should be. And this job is now complete. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.